From the Studio 13 Studios in Splendor, Texas, Hank's Think Tank is brought to you by Buster Brown Propane. Quiet on set. Picture is up. All right, roll sound. Rolling. Roll cameras. Cams rolling. And three, two. Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Hank's Think Tank. Today is September the 11th and uh, you know every every time this this date comes around I I just have a, a strange feeling the whole day. I remember that day really well um, but I don't want that to foreshadow what's going on with the podcast today. I've got a great guest in. She's actually in for the second time. She was here before under the same pretense actually. And her name is Janice Holt, and she is running for the Texas House, District 18, which is this district. I'm proud to introduce her. I think she's going to be a really viable candidate, and uh, she's got some really good ideas. We're going to talk about some of those today. And uh, guys, I just want to mention again, I want to thank you for supporting me and supporting this channel. And uh, yeah, I mean, we just keep doing it, you know, so as, as often as we can. Janice, good to have you in. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well, Hank. Thank you so much. And uh, just before we get started, I want to congratulate you on your new studio here. It's really uh, very awesome. It's very nice. And you've done done well. Done Great. well. Really, really looks good. Um, and thank you for bringing up 9-11. Uh, you know, I was teaching school back then, actually, and taught fourth grade. And the counselor came around to every classroom and told us about what was going on. And back then we didn't have all live TV, didn't have a cell phone even. And, uh, but we got on the computer and, you know, and watched what was going on. And it was a sad day in American history and one that we can't forget. If we forget, then we're doomed to repeat it. And so we have to always be vigilant. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. No problem. The thing yeah. that bothers me the most about 9-11 was that it changed the course of not only history, but the way that we do everything mm -hmm. from the way we travel to the way we work yep. to the way we look at oversight to the way that we deal with government to the way government deals with us. Correct. So I mean, it, Correct. yeah, I mean it and it that really does bother me a lot because I think that being we it's like we lost our innocence yeah you know yep I mean, we lost a lot of our liberties in, oh yeah in that yeah uh, you know in the guise of of uh protection right uh, we lost a lot of our liberties and our free freedom to travel back and forth freely mm -hmm. a lot of restrictions on that and i understand it i get it i understand but um we gave up some things that day oh, yeah, or absolutely. from that day yeah yeah you know the patriot act was mm -hmm. born out of all that and yep. i think the patriot act is one of the worst pieces of legislation mm -hmm. to ever yeah. cross anybody's yeah. desk but everybody was ready for yeah. it back then because yeah, they were scared we were all scared and the legislature yeah. knew that I think, but, yeah. um, you know, and you don't get that back. No. <laughs> Once no. that cat's out of the bag, That's it's right. out. That's right. Yeah. You're right. Or, yeah. or else you're going to get clawed up <laughs> trying to do it. That's right. So district 18, let's yes. talk a little bit about what all that covers. I know it covers okay. East Montgomery County. Yes. Splendora, um, Roman forest, Porter, all that specifically. Correct. Correct. And, um, East Montgomery County is kind of like Hardin County where I'm from. I'm in mm -hmm. Silsby. Okay. Uh, we were added to this district with, uh, redistricting. Hardin County used to be in house district 18, uh, excuse me, 19, mm -hmm. which was, uh, Hardin, Liberty, um, no, excuse me, Hardin, Tyler, Polk, Jasper and Newton counties. Okay. And then uh, I'm not real sure where y'all were in East Montgomery County, but y'all were not with. Uh, I think we were District yes. 8. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. I think you're right on that. Yeah. Um, I'd have to go back and look. But East Montgomery County, as well as Hardin County, got added to. Uh, San Jacinto County and Liberty County. They lost Walker County in mm -hmm. that in that shift and picked up Hardin County and East Montgomery County. And that's all the result of census, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Because yeah. um, I don't think everybody knows that. That's why I wanted no, to mention it. No, be because uh, I don't know if many people know that the number of House representatives and the number of senators in Texas is stagnant. It stays the same mm -hmm. always. Not, right. Now, Congress, it, it changes with the population. We picked up two new seats last time uh, because of the census uh, on the federal level. But uh, there are 150 state representatives and there are 31 senators. And that sounds like an odd number. Do you know why those numbers 
are those numbers? Not specifically. They are in our Texas Constitution. There are 150 Psalms and there are 31 Proverbs. And that's what they base that off of. Not many people know that. So there will always be 150 state representatives unless there's a change to the Constitution of Texas. So... Or unless the border of Texas changes. Uh, wow, that's a good point. Good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, but every every happen. ten years, that's right. Every ten years, in the population adjusts to the number of um, that have to be in each district, and so that's and the they get to play with that. You know, every time mm-hmm. that redistricting committees in the Senate and the House, they uh, play with that in order to try to make those districts. You know, they move them around the way they right. want them to move them around. So, yeah, so that happened two years ago. That's correct. That's okay. correct. So uh, Hardin County and East Montgomery County mm-hmm. all got into this district two years ago, uh, which is when I ran previously for this office. Well, I'm proud to be grouped in with those individuals. That sounds like <laughs> I am and it's And it's a huge district, it actually. Is. It is. If you look at it on the map, you're like, yep. damn, that's big. It's big. And it's, and it's a vast difference from East Montgomery County over to the far east side. You're on mm-hmm. the far west side. We're the far east side over in Silsby. Yeah. Uh, there's not really much past Silsby before the Hardin County line. Man. And so there's a lot of difference between those two sides of the district, too, mm-hmm. as well. And so it encompasses a lot of fine people and uh, just good Texans who want a good governance. And so um, that's why I'm running. That's great. Fantastic. Okay. So, and you had ran before. Correct. And has your platform changed any? Um, I would think that circumstances have changed, so it's somewhat different. Sure, it's somewhat different. The core values that I have of conservatism uh, and on faith and family, you know, mm-hmm. those things are all are there. They've been embedded in me since I was a child. And well, that's the nucleus of your soul. That's that's correct. You and know? so yeah. it, it's really hard for me to, uh, to stray from that too far. Um, you know, uh, so... So those things haven't changed. What has changed is, I feel like, the need for a stronger conservative legislature. The House of Representatives is in the hands of the Republicans. Mm -hmm. It should be an easy process to get Republican legislation passed, Mm -hmm. and it's not. And, you know, I believe that there are are representatives who are Republican who are not voting for our priorities and our values that we as Republicans want. And, you know, in a primary, it's all about being a Republican Mm -hmm. because this is the Republican primary and the Democrat primary, same thing, only on the Democrat side. So we're looking for the strongest Republican or we should be looking for the strongest Republican in a primary that will promote our values and the legislative priorities. Uh, Those priorities are set, excuse me, are set through, um, through our convention, our Republican party convention, and then through the the people, you Mm -hmm. know, when we vote on the, uh, the, in the primary, when we vote on propositions, you know, we get a pulse of the, uh, a pulse of the voters. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to see Okay, so they want this 85% or they want that 88% or 93%, you know, whichever the propositions. Everybody knows on Republican primary we have right. propositions. And that's provided that those propositions are written correctly. That's true. Because a lot of times they're A lot of times they're, they're written, leading questions. Yeah, they're yeah. leading and, and mm-hmm. you think, well, if I vote yes, it actually means no. But yeah. if I vote no, it actually I know, no. I know. And, yes. you know, as the, the State Republican Executive Committee, which I'm on currently, uh, you know, they are the ones that are responsible for getting those on to the ballot. And mm-hmm. that was one of the things that I told them last time. Uh, I'm not on that committee, but I said, you know, we have to make these propositions where they're not tricky. And so people know for sure exactly, you know, what those propositions are and how they, uh, how there are to vote. Like, it's like, well, if I vote no, it's because I really want this. And, you know, so it's hard. It's hard. I've read some. I was like, wow, you got to be an actuary. (laughs) That's right. Figure this thing out. That's right. So So in this, in this go around, if you're elected, is there anything that that you have an idea of some piece of legislation that you'd like to introduce pretty quickly? Well, I mean, so, is there something that sticks out in your mind that sure. you say, well, this needs to be fixed? Right. Well, How can we fix it? Right. And I'm, I'm glad you asked that because in House District 18, one of the biggest problems that I see, which is over here in, in the western side of the district, is uh, the, uh, the illegal immigration problem that has mm-hmm. come up come up from Harris County, come up 59, and it's landed right here in 
uh, Liberty County as well as in East Montgomery County. And, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but Mm -hmm. I know it's a problem. And we've got to get a handle on it because it is growing exponentially. And if we don't get a handle on it, then we're in for some really bad times Mm -hmm. uh, because there's already been the crime is is you know, has just exponentially grown. Uh, we have the trafficking, we have drug trafficking as well as human trafficking going on uh, from uh, Harris County all the way up. Uh, and so we've got to get a handle on it. These are our children. Mm-hmm. These these are our children. You know, they may be illegal children, but they're still children. And we have to take care of that and, and make sure. And if the laws are not on the books to protect the citizens, then they need to be. Mm-hmm. And so that's something that I'm going to be looking at very strongly and very quickly uh, is, you know, how can, what can we do to help law enforcement, help our local government, help them be able to uh, clamp down on that, whether it's from uh, regulations for housing or mm-hmm. whether it's the drug trafficking, the, the uh, <clears throat> human trafficking, all of those issues. So that's, that's one of the main things. Yes. Well, you know, fortunately, it's a multi-pronged problem. It is. In other words, there's so many hidden implications that I think most people don't even see. You know, when you have an influx of, of immigration like that, you have an automatic underground economy that comes with it. Mm-hmm. And so that economy, even though it, it runs and it works very well for those particular individuals, there aren't taxes paid out of that. There, so we miss out on the sales taxes. Mm-hmm. We miss out on some other things that I think would help us to, to get the funding to support those individuals agree because the infrastructure needs to be built to support it that's right you know water flooding i mean there, there's just mm-hmm. and not only are there tax implications but there's also implications on the education side implications on the medical side and i guess what i'm trying to get at is being that it's a multi-pronged problem legislation could be brought forth in each one of those areas agree. To try to, and and what I don't want to do, I don't want to get rid of these these individuals. That's not what I'm after. Mm -hmm. What what I'm after is let's get them on the books, Mm -hmm. you know, and let's get them as part of our society as well Mm -hmm. and part of our culture as well and see if we can all live cohesively and benefit from each other. And I think the problem is we don't understand them, they don't understand us, and there's a separation. And if if that separation wasn't there, things would be so much better. I, I agree with you, Hank, and, and you know, what you said about finding these solutions, it's not just a, you could create one bill that's going to cover all of that. Right. It and is that, a series. A lot of people think that yeah, there it is. Yeah, it is a series you know? of bills, and it's talking with uh, those who are putting together even border security bills, mm-hmm. you know, and in each of those areas that, that you can, you know, have an influence on because we are here living it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am not going to be a representative who's not on site. You know, I I have never been that person. I'm going to be right in the big middle of it trying to figure out what's going on and how we can help uh, because it doesn't do any good to avoid the problem or ignore the problem. You have to get right in the middle of it and find out what it is uh, that they need, the housing, uh, the regulations on the housing, mm-hmm. the, the school districts. Uh, you know, Cleveland ISD has, has grown in the last four or five years. They've almost doubled their uh, school district yeah, I population. Some, I actually saw some pictures of kids in the hallway, and I was yeah. like, wow. They, they can't even move. Be, yeah, you got to be can't kidding. Even move. I can't even imagine being a former school teacher. I can't even imagine the chaos mm-hmm. uh, that's going on. And, you know, at the mm-hmm. high school level, these kids, the t- teachers blend in with the kids. Right. You know, because they're all the same height. And, you know, mm-hmm. and so uh, it, it's just chaotic. And, and so I saw those same pictures, I'm sure. Right. And so something needs to be done there and, and they're doing the best they can, mm-hmm. but you touched, touched on it just a second ago where, you know, they're not paying taxes. You know, if, if they're illegal, they're not paying taxes and, and they have that whole underground. If you go down there in those areas, you know, they have their food trucks and things like that, that, you right. know, that they're selling. And, and, you know, so all of that has to be, um, right. because, and that's, a lot of times because they bring that culture with them mm-hmm. from there. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's no, just, it's just, it's it just doesn't work here. That's it's right. It's there. different. And it has to be, uh, right. you know, it has to be looked at to make sure that everything is above board mm-hmm. and that, 
you know, they're paying their fair share in that too as well. And then you have the legal, Mm -hmm. I'm referring to the illegal population. Then you have the legal population that's there who want, you know, everything. They've come here to America because they want what America Mm -hmm. has to offer, you know, and they don't like that either. They don't like that uh, there's illegal operations going on. Mm -hmm. You know, they want everybody to be able to uh, become a citizen and and vote and pay taxes and become a part of Texas and a part of America. But it has to be done. I mean, there's a process for it. So uh, what I'm hearing is that process is being thwarted at some levels, and that's not right either. And so, well, I'm sure because there's money to be made on that side sure, as well. Sure, and so, so yeah. um, you know, but all of that, all the aspects of that have to be looked at, and, and legislation tough, has tough to, problem. it is a tough problem, and yeah. and you have to work with your local governments and your county governments and, and find out what is the mm-hmm. best thing that we can do here. What is it that you feel like we need? Um, I'm sure the roads here in Splendora and East Montgomery County, you've seen the road conditions. I know they are in Liberty County as well. Uh, oh, yeah, we're the pipeline out. I know, yeah, that's so, right. And so yeah. there's a lot of traffic, and, uh, you know, that's a lot of um, a lot of road maintenance that needs mm-hmm. to happen. In uh, Plum Grove over in Liberty County, you know, they're 25, 30 minutes from any services any you know emergency right. services and uh so it's hard to get down there and there's a sign that says you know police department substation or whatever it is coming and that mm-hmm. was there two years ago when i ran and it's still you know just there. to give you an idea of the scope that's fifty five thousand acres mm-hmm. in in plum grove that's that's been that's a the terrenos project mm-hmm. they expect to have i think it's three hundred thousand plus people there in the mm-hmm. next couple of years mm. I can't imagine 300,000 people trying to use FM 2090 to get back to 59. Right, right. You know, and we just and they will. And we just don't have that many arteries going back right. that way right. because none of this was ever really planned to be large communities. Right. You know, back, I looked at all the plats and, and, and all the, the ideas and, and what they had back in the 60s when a lot of this was being put together. This was And it rural. was just carved out dirt roads. Yeah. yeah some of this yeah. was... Where we live now was literally campground that was owned by Exxon. Oh wow! And they were they were given away to mm-hmm. their employees as mm-hmm. bonuses. Oh wow! You know, and so none of this was ever history. really planned out. Right. And so now it's, we're it's just we're growing here. on top of it. Yeah, we have a, a whole bunch of people, and we've got to figure out a way to right. to make this work. Yeah. And you know, while you were talking about creating legislation and, and the different points that could go there, I started thinking about education backed legislation. And I don't know if we've ever had that before. And I think maybe it, it may be something that that our legislators need to consider is every time that legislation is passed, there should be some video or something that the general public can go to to learn how that particular piece of legislation works. Let me give you an example. So recently in September, um, the new law was passed that if you're a Texas driver and you get pulled over, you're now required to provide your identification, be it a driver's license or whatever you might have. But there's also been questions, well, is that requirement also upon the passenger? And from my research that I can tell, it hasn't been. But the fact that that question remains Mm -hmm. makes me think, why don't we have education-backed legislation? Kind of like a um, public service announcement. So, yeah, I think Mm -hmm. every time a piece of legislation should be passed, one of the requirements should be that there's an education format to that to teach the legislated mm-hmm. what it is because some of these things are complicated. Yeah. You know, take the, the new, the new uh, tax relief, mm-hmm. homeowners tax relief program. that was just recently passed. I don't understand it. All I know is, is that the homestead exemption went up to a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Other than that, I really haven't been able to disseminate how that particular piece of legislation works when it goes into effect, who it affects, mm-hmm. How does it how does it affect the elderly, handicapped mm-hmm. people, things mm-hmm. like that? So we should have something. I like agree that. with you, and that's you know, education things make all my signals go off, yeah. and and I, I think that's a wonderful idea actually to have uh, a follow up with every piece of legislation that's especially something like the property tax or schools yeah, or I mean, something that's going to affect <laughs> a lot of people, yeah. you know, to be able to say. You know, hey, this is your. And if it comes know. from the legislators, then that's there's right. then there's no question right. of whether it's this way or that way. Yep. We'll know. That's right. You that's know? right because they're going to explain yeah. it the right way. And you could even have somebody from both sides, there, you know, a Republican and a Democrat talking about it 
you know, to make sure it's all fair and balanced. But now uh, you've obscured the truth. <laughs> Possibly. There go, well, there Possibly. goes that idea. That just, yeah, that That's just true. went right out That's the window. True. <laughs> so, well, in an ideal world, um, that would be, uh, that yeah. would be good. I, I would rather see it be by yeah. uh, nonpartisan as opposed to yeah. being represented by either yeah. party. Yeah. Just, just straight education. Yeah. This is what it means. Truth. This is yeah. what it means for you. If you're in this tax bracket, this is what it means. If you're in this tax bracket, right. this is what it means for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, I agree with and that. And with all I legislation. Agree with that. So, and, and talking about legislation, one question I wanted to ask, and uh, th- and I don't really think this is a trick question or anything like that, but do you think there's any legislation out there that just needs to come off the books? <laughs> I mean, is that something that you would want to look at? You say, wait a minute, this has always been a bad law. This law either doesn't apply to everyone or it applies unfairly. Why don't we look at de-legislating that and getting it off the books. Right. Well, I don't ha- I right off the top of my head, I don't have anything specific, but the concept is spot on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as part of property tax relief, when we talk about that and, you know, helping our citizens with their property taxes, that's a component that I feel like is too f- too often is just not looked at at all is that reducing the size of government, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of legislation has purse strings attached to it. Oh yeah. And you know, if yeah. we just, if we just spent some time and looked at those, you know, some of the legislation that is either outdated, frivolous, unfounded, you know, whatever it is, right. then we can, you know, we can have legislation that would, you know, at least, cut off the financial part of it and then it kind of dies mm-hmm. you know uh, but I don't, like I said I don't have anything specifically right off the top of my head that's a good question I for next round I'll have that yeah maybe, have something maybe in there mind. should be a committee for that that'd you know be, that'd be awesome well they have you know you have the sunset committee that does look right. at the worth worthiness of of certain functions of mm-hmm. government but um to but get sunset into that only comes around every 10 years yeah but you know? to look at the meat of mm-hmm. of legislation that you know was something that wow, that was really a bad bill, yeah. you know, then uh, that's just something that would have to be looked at yeah. on an individual basis. But uh, but it's definitely part of being a conservative, a fiscal conservative on uh, on your property taxes because it's the, it's the people's money. You know, right. It's your money, it's my money, and all of us who pay taxes, it's our money that goes into the pot. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, we need to be very judicial about how we spend it. And uh, just spending it because it's there is is not always a good thing and one of the things that just popped in my head that bothers me a lot about uh about our budgeting at at the legislative level and i'm not real sure the right answer to it uh at this point but you get an entity you know a a commission a board uh you know and that gets funding from Mm -hmm. the state when when budget time rolls around again it's like what can we spend this money on if we don't spend it we're going to lose it right so they spend it on things that they don't necessarily need mm-hmm. and stock their, um, I heard it, I don't even remember where I was listening to this, but, you know, they stock their office with staples and, sure. and you know, on paper and all of oh, this yeah. stuff that they and don't that, really need. And that's a standard I've but heard that's over, right. over, and over, it, over it's again. In, yeah. It's in the school districts, because I, mm-hmm. I remember it from when I taught school, uh, you know, and all the way up. And it's like, how can we spend this so that we don't lose it? Well, mm-hmm. sometimes you need to lose it. You don't need to spend it. Right. And so, you yeah, know, If we that's, all lost it a little, maybe our taxes go down. That's correct. <laughs> that's correct. So yeah. that's something that needs to be looked at. And, and that's part of a uh, reducing our property taxes because Mm -hmm. that saves everybody money um and can be used for something like border security or something Mm -hmm. about the you know about human trafficking drug trafficking those things that are really important issues Mm -hmm. not that the others aren't important but things that really affect us and have you know dangerous consequences if we don't get a handle on them so you think most or government bodies should be required to do zero based budgeting then well you know i (laughs) I just think it's something that we really need to look into is mm-hmm. to find out because sometimes sometimes they use that money to give bonuses to employees that have really done a good job and mm-hmm. they've done they've done well and and so I I think there's some cases where you know it might be justified but I just really think we need to really you know look into this I don't know if okay. it would you know go as far as the zero base budgeting <clears throat> um, but you know to really be able to look at it in a, in a different way and not not just because you have this money, spend it. Yeah. Let's let's you. see, you know, if your budget says this, then that's your budget. And if you're not spending, 
you know, 15% of it, well then you should have a 15% budget cut. You right. know, it, it, you shouldn't, if you don't right. need all that money, then let's, you know, have your cost of living increases as you need them. But, uh, but, but really, you know, on your supplies mm-hmm. and things like that, if you don't need it, don't spend it, you know, yeah, let's put it back sense. into the coffers for the, you know, to, for the benefit of the taxpayers. There you go. All right. So last time you were here, we talked a little bit about property taxes mm-hmm. and the abolishment thereof and going with maybe a consumption tax mm-hmm. still feel the same way. Well, you know, I've done over the last year or two, I've really watched that and, and the consumption tax and there, you know, it's really not gaining a lot of ground uh, because, you know, is everybody willing to pay 20 or 25 percent on your shopping, you know, on your clothes? And I think it'd be know, easier, anything, actually. You know, you know yeah. it'd be easier on me. Right. You know, that I write a pretty big check every year. Right. right you know. Well, I, yeah, I do so too, I mean, as well. Yeah. I, and I, you know, I haven't really put pen to paper to see which one I would uh, benefit more from. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but there's a lot of people that that would hurt, and I get that. Uh, right. There would always, there's always going to have to be allowances for mm-hmm. uh, those who you know are lower income uh, and citizens. The, and, and, and that, all that circles back around again to that underground economy that we discussed mm-hmm. before. Would a consumption tax apply? in that underground economy probably mm-hmm. not yeah you well know, and, and they, then you have a good way to get around that right and then you yeah. have the higher end you know who uh, i've heard plans out there that um you know luxury items that they would pay a higher tax mm-hmm. you know on. and so is that fair just because they are you know our successful business right, people to afford it. Yeah. yeah is it fair that that you know because you're successful that you get you know you have to be double taxed or triple taxed or whatever so mm-hmm. uh there's a lot of discussions that have to be made about around property tax and it used to be um you know property tax relief was the mm-hmm. buzzword and now that's almost the devil now <laughs> you know mm-hmm. it's no it's elimination and so those are conversations that have to be had um you know of how that will all balance out but i'm definitely for uh looking at this and i think what we had this last session was a good start uh we'll see how that mm-hmm. of course the voters have to vote on that uh in november i don't it, think it'll have a problem i don't think so either <laughs> i think they're going to word that one really well like yeah. they've already worded it and it's pretty yeah. self-explanatory of of how it's going to help um people are going to say yes lower my taxes yes yeah. uh, i think that's prop four i believe is the uh, property tax relief bill okay. so um so once that and it's and it's going to go retroactive it's going to start as soon as that it's not going to have to wait that's uh, great you know yeah. so that's so that's good so our so our taxes that we'll have to pay in january or mm-hmm. you know december january whenever you pay would be reflected will be reflected of the new bill so that's that's, that's a good thing yeah that's, that's a good. good thing yeah. okay yeah i think our tax rates aren't that bad mm-hmm. it's our appraisals mm-hmm. Yep. And so what I'd like to see is some legislation that oversees appraisals. We talked about that two yeah. years ago, yeah. and that was part of, of my concept of that is the, the appraisal districts who are not elected. They're appointed by mm-hmm. the entities, the counties, the school districts, and things like that. They're appointed to be on that appraisal board, and then they're not held accountable in any way. There's mm-hmm. no voter accountability there and so and the wheels are off they can do whatever they want that's right you know and that right and the appraiser you know guides that and Mm -hmm. uh they go and you know they have their meetings and all that to set these rates and then i don't know if it's happening here if it like it's happening over in hardin county but there are many 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 people going and uh, having those rates and they're spending a lot of money Mm -hmm. doing that yes and so to me that's wasteful spending every yes if the appraisals were damn near correct there wouldn't be that many people that were trying to. That's right. As you know, as you know I'm that. on the school board in mm-hmm. Silsby, and every month we have refunds going out to taxpayers who have gone and gotten, uh, you know, they've they've mm-hmm. uh, appealed their their uh, taxes and they have gotten relief from that, and so we are writing checks, you know, yeah, it's every just, month. It's a shame that you have to do that. Yep. So can you think of anything off the top of your head? I mean, would you want the the appraisal district? board members to be elected is that something that you think would would help well i think it would because then they'd have a constituency they have to answer that's right that's right and and that's that's one answer Mm -hmm. or or they would have some sort of regulatory authority over them um you know that would you know pay attention to what's going on Mm -hmm. so you don't have these rogue people just out there you know i'll volunteer for that (laughs) (laughs) so um anyway but yeah i i think they they need a constituency to um to answer, to answer to, to. yeah absolutely. right now the answer to the school districts and the mm-hmm. county and city governments you know they, that's their entities. but that's a conflict of interest because they're raising taxes for those to benefit those right. yeah so <laughs> yeah and you know we yeah. have to we have to 
put some, you know, we bring forth a name to be put on there every, um, I think it's every two years, mm-hmm. might be every year, all that runs together, but, um, to put on that and you, and you put someone forth that you hope will, you know, mm-hmm. will pay attention to this and be real cognizant of the fact that this is the taxpayers, you know, money. And it's, you know, it's not our money. It's not right. the government entity's money. It's not the state's money. It's, it's the, you know, it's the people's money. Mm-hmm. And so, um, anyway, but yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we're in the middle of a drought and yes. it's been a bad one. Yes. Um, I don't think that we've seen what's going to happen from this length of time without rain. I think the trees have only started to, to think about what's going on. <laughs> I think we're going to lose a lot of trees in this area. Yep, they're withering. Mm-hmm. The problem with that is that when we do have floods, you know, it's trees that drink up a lot of that water. Mm-hmm. Well, with the construction going on, the death of all these trees and, and such, I think we're going to have a pretty serious flooding issue. Sure, because every time a tree dies, the root system dies. And if you have to pull that tree up and pull the root system up, well, then, you know. Yeah, there's you, nothing to suck right. up that water. And, you know, the trees, the root systems of all of our trees, I mean, we are in the piney woods, you mm-hmm. know, the bottom end of the piney woods. And, um, you know, the that root system is what holds our soil together, keeps the runoff, you know, mm-hmm. is uh, from happening. And so, but you're right. And, and the you know, you're losing these trees, especially these trees with big root systems, um, then you got a problem. Right. You've got a flooding problem. You've got an erosion problem. Uh, we just came back from Arkansas, my husband and I, and we were driving when we left and when we were coming back, we were just looking at all the trees. You could just see it along the sides of the road, mm-hmm. the trees that were really struggling, you know. Right. And, yeah. and I mean, so, you can see it out here. And if we have a, uh, a hurricane, God forbid, that's going to, yeah. that's going to kick up a bunch of wind, mm-hmm. then, um, that's going to be a problem. Right. Then later on, if we have a freeze uh, and you've got uh, limbs that are covered in ice, mm-hmm. dead limbs, yeah. then mm-hmm. you're going to have a lot of problems pulling down power lines and, right. you know, and having a lot of issues. So it, it is a problem. And you're right. It's a it's a far reaching problem, one that we haven't thought about uh, in a while. So but how do you how do you fix a drought? You, know? no, you don't. But, yeah. but I, I think what I was leading into was. Um, you know, being that we know that these conditions exist and being that we know that there's a lot more people here, there's a lot less places for the water to go. Mm-hmm. At what point do you think Montgomery County would be ready, or at least this district would be ready for a flood control district? And you got to keep in mind, we're looking at another taxing authority. Sure. So, and that would be a taxing entity that needed, that would need a tremendous amount of funding to make things right. work. And a lot of support in order to get support, going. Yep. You know, a lot of right of way. Yep. So you're talking about land being being mm-hmm. lost and, and right. maybe possibly some people losing their homes. Yep. But you've got to support the majority of the county too. Sure. Sure. So where are you at on flood control? Well, and and you know you are very fortunate over here. Your commissioner over here is uh he's just super. That great yeah, man. He is. I've he's listened awesome. to him uh, several different on your show as well yeah. as out and about uh, and he is on top of what he's doing and he's new uh, you know he's fairly new to the job and uh, he I'm just, not hesitant to say it all to date he is absolutely 100% the best commissioner we've ever fantastic had. you know so I he works like a dog he yep, really does yep I know. haven't had a chance to meet with him personally I've uh, got that trying to get scheduled uh, a time here soon to talk with him personally uh, so I've only just had, you know, just brief encounters with him. But mm-hmm. he seems like a guy who is going to be on top of that oh, yeah. uh, for Montgomery County and for East Montgomery County specifically. But it is a big problem. And if you don't think ahead and think out of the box a little bit, then you're going to you're going to be in trouble. And you talk about, um, you know, people losing their homes, you know, having to give up their yeah, homes. See, it's going to happen either yeah. way. Th- we're either going to get flooded right. out or we're going to. That's where I was going yeah. with that. You're going to have a problem where they voluntarily, you know, try to give up their home in order mm-hmm. to make way for uh, this flooding um, area uh, to be able to handle the flood mm-hmm. or they're going to lose their home in an emergency type situation or at least heavily damage their home. And so um, I, I imagine Matt, Commissioner Gray has, uh, got that under his radar and is going to be looking at that. But as a state legislator, you have to be open to talking with these local officials, and mm-hmm. Commissioner Gray would be one of them, uh, as to what can we do on the on the state level in order to 
help you do your job better and to protect the citizens because we we share constituencies right? right and so you know it's it's not it's it's not something that you can just you know not look at you have to be able to make sure you're on top of it and working with them and providing state um, support any way that you can and you know providing another taxing entity makes people a little freaky, you know, right now. Yeah. And, and I get all that. That's, yeah. I mean, cause um, we're already taxed out, right. you know? which, which I think, you know, it's what I mentioned just a while ago was about the ability to cut things at the state level so that mm-hmm. we can have the money to be able to do things that is going to protect our citizens and help our citizens. I can't even imagine what's going to happen out in the Colonista area. If we ever have flooding, there it's was one two years ago, they mm-hmm. had a big flood come through there and I went down there uh, to bring some water and some snacks and things to our first responders that are down toward that area. Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't believe the, how the road was the road that already needs maintenance is washed out in right. places and even further eroding. Um, and the people that are in these low lying areas uh, and we have it over in Hardin County, Liberty County also deals with it. And mm-hmm. I'm sure San Jacinto does as well. And so, you know, but part of that is um, on the state level is let's, let's hone in some of this spending. That's mm-hmm. another part of it. You know, the shrink spending and, uh, you know, and then provide more services because you're do you more know, with less. That's right. That's, that's right. Matt Gray's mantra. That's right. And yeah. they, he's spot on, you know, and, yeah. but, but if as a legislator and, and commissioner Gray came to me and said, Hey, I need help. Well, then you got to find that help. You got to mm-hmm. find it, you know, and that's, that's where being on the, as a, as a representative who's in tune with the, the county governments, the, the local governments, um, you, when you're in tune with those governments, then you're able to really respond in a much more efficient way and uh, get them what they need uh, in, a, in a very quick way. Yeah, I agree. And then, you, you know, you put on your rubber boots and your gloves and you go get in there and help That's and it. do what you can to help because yeah. these are people who are hurting. Uh, you remember Harvey, mm-hmm. you know, coming through and, you know, we had people in Hardin County hurting just really – uh, oh yeah, it was rough you know, all over. It was. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, that's right. From Harris County all the way up through. Yeah, and I have some thing. serious concerns. Yeah. So I mean, eventually it's going to start raining that's again. That's right. That's yeah. right. It will. It will. And so. we don't need to wait until then. You know, to, let's. We want to retroactively. We don't want to retroactively try to fix something. Right. Yeah. You know, we want to fix it before it happens. So you know, and that's where um, I do give kudos to Commissioner Gray. I think he's okay. on top of all of that. Yeah. Um, but that's definitely a conversation that I want to have with him, and and just see how, as a state legislature, how I could be helpful okay. uh, in that situation. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. All right, and so. You're right now you're employed or you retired or uh, my husband and I own our business. Oh, really? Yep. And I work okay. from home. We do indoor air purification. Cool. And so we've okay. been very busy since COVID, uh, since we mm-hmm. killed COVID with our technology. And uh, so, but we work from home. So that allows me to be able to go and do these kinds of things and to okay. be out in the district. So uh, I'm not under the constraints of a, of a full-time job. Uh, okay. so, uh, so you'll definitely have the time to sit absolutely. down and and Absolutely. think about things and write good legislation Absolutely. and get together with your peers. And, yep. and that'll start as soon as I'm elected uh, in the primary. Normally, okay. we don't have a Democrat uh, opponent, mm-hmm. but even if we do, we're an 84% district. And mm-hmm. so... Uh, Hard we, to find a Democrat in these parts. That's right. That's right. <laughs> they don't... Uh, they don't admit it a lot of times, but yeah. uh, but as soon as that election's over, then you start planning, and, and that's what I'll be doing, planning and getting the right staff, um, you know, in the people who have the experience mm-hmm. to be able to do the job and to get, you know, I've never been a legislator before. Mm-hmm. I've worked with legislators, but I've never really been one. Mm-hmm. So it's it's time to, you can't just, you know, you can't just start in January because <laughs> it starts, right. the yeah, job gotta, starts yeah, way you before. Hit the ground running. That's right. Yeah. And that's in, you know, in the spring after the election is when, uh, you know, when you start working, you know, and getting the team together and then getting the legislative together, legislation together so that, um, when that time opens up, then you can start making those bills and filing those bills. And one of them is that, um, you know, we were talking about this situation with the colonistas and, and working through mm-hmm. all the different avenues that we can to provide relief and help in those areas and okay. take care of the kids, take care of the people and um, help. Like you said, you know, they're people and, yeah, absolutely. and they want to be here for a better opportunity than um, let's become a citizen. Let's get that happen. Mm-hmm. You know, remove those barriers if we have to, to help, 
you know, help them become a citizen. If that's what they're wanting to be a productive citizen and contribute to our society, well, then we need to help them make that happen. You know, one thing I never hear when we, anytime I have a conversation about illegal immigration and it never comes up, but how great is it to live in a country that's so desired by that many people Mm -hmm. that they're willing to literally risk death to get here? Yeah. You know? There's no other country I'm, in the world right. that does that, yeah. that has that. Right. We are the only yeah. shining city on the hill, yeah. you know, that people want to get to um, so for different though, reasons, for different reasons yeah. they're wanting to come here. And uh, even though we have a, a multitude mm-hmm. of problems, be mm-hmm. those local or, or national, I mean, still, we're the greatest place on Absolutely. earth, I think. Absolutely. You and um, what they call the melting pot, <laughs> you know, used to be called the melting pot. And we have to yeah. make sure that it is still the melting pot because in a melting pot, everything becomes one mm-hmm. and not, you know, we still, we can't have the factions, right? Uh, you know, we, you can't come to our country and, and expect to be living like you're in your home country. Mm-hmm. You know, when you come here, we want you to assimilate. We want you to be a part of, but a producing part of mm-hmm. our economy and, and, uh, you know, to be able to continue to make it the reason why you came here. That's right. That's right. There, there is go. a reason. And, that's you know, it. we're, we're blessed to be born here. And I, you know, I thank God every day for that, mm-hmm. you know, but not everybody has that's in America. My daughter-in-law came from Mexico City and, you know, she moved here when she married my son. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's been here 10 years. She's come in the legal way. And, you know, that's what we have to offer for everyone. And a lot of that is the border security. That's a huge issue that we've got to get a handle on because the federal government is not doing their job. So we've got to make sure to protect our citizens. A lot of money being that's spent right. there, too. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That we're not supposed yeah. to spend. I had a conversation with John Cornyn in D.C. one time. He's like, this is costing our districts, our mm-hmm. hospitals, our governments, you know, and there needs to be some federal money coming back in here into these those entities to help support what the federal government is not doing. And right. he agreed with that. And, you know, whether there's anything he can do about it is a whole other story. But Tough um, case. It is. I think it's probably it the toughest case America's faced it is. so far. Yeah. I agree. So, I agree. Okay. So if somebody wants to learn more about Janice Holt, is your website still up? It still is. And it's uh, holtfortexas.com, H-O-L-T, holtfortexas.com. You can go there and learn a bit, little bit more about me, donate, help okay. the campaign, volunteer. Uh, we're looking for volunteers all the time to help with block walking and calling and you know getting the word out. Okay. Uh, we're going to be having events coming up all around the district and would love to have your viewers attend one of those okay. uh, when it's over here in the East Montgomery County area. And I'd love to meet you individually and really uh, mm-hmm. get to know you yeah i'm actually thinking about putting together and meet the candidates oh that'd be great so yeah that'd, that'd be that'd great be awesome and uh what about um facebook tiktok all yeah. that kind of stuff well i'm on facebook not on tiktok okay. uh you don't have I'm, any tiktok videos yet no i do. well i do i have one of my mother-in-law shooting a basket for the first time in her life and making making a basket she made it <laughs> she made it oh, that's, that's about cool. the fourth or fifth try she made wow. it that's great. so that was fun she's 80 88 i think and so that was fun never too old um, she never basket. too old that yeah. she'd never done that before um that's good. so that's my only tiktok video okay. uh that i have but um but anyway, but I'm on Facebook. You can also find me there okay. and uh, share that and uh, get the word out. Uh, okay. I'm ready to meet anybody. My number is 409-781-2130. That's my cell number. Okay. Don't call me right now because it's ringing my purse there. But uh, <laughs> but please give me a call. Send me a text. Um, my email is uh, Janice at HoltforTexas.com. I want to hear from you. I want to know what what concerns you in House District 18, and how can I help? That's what I want to know. Okay. And so when's Election Day? Election Day is March the March. 5th. Wow. I believe it's the 5th. I'd have to look that up make That's sure. That's tomorrow. But it's, I know. It's six months, yeah, but tomorrow. six months will fly. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got the November election ahead of us first, mm-hmm. and those propositions that we were talking about, I think there's 14 propositions, and then – uh, we will file in November and December and then hit the ground running until March. Okay. And that's the primary. Right. Early voting will be last part of February. That's crazy. About Valentine's Day is, is when it about wow. starts. So yeah. uh, that's six weeks after uh, Christmas. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a sprint. Uh, that's why I would uh, I'd love to talk with you individually, talk with your viewers individually about issues that uh, that they have. So give me a call. I'd love to have you uh, on the call and we'll 
you know, figure it out and okay. see how I can help. 409-781-2130, Janice at HoltForTexas.com. There you go. Well, Janice, I appreciate you coming Thank on. you, Hank. I appreciate Always it. Always have a great time hanging out Thank with you. Thank you. Appreciate it and, so much. Uh, so there you have it, folks. Uh, Janice Holt, uh, District 18, House of Representatives, strong candidate, you know. But again, what we want you to do is vote for someone, an individual, whose ideas are in alignment with what your ideas are. It's the only way we're ever going to get out of the fix that we're in, and it's the only way we're ever going to fix the problems that face us in today's society, locally and nationally. Good to have you aboard, Janice. Thank you. Thank you again. No problem. I'm Hank. This is Hank's Think Tank, and we're out.